Hello friends, today we'll discuss about coagulants and anticoagulants pharmacology. In this video lecture, first we will see what is hemostasis. Hemostasis is the stoppage of bleeding from the site of injury. It contains three steps. First, the vasovascular spasm, the formation of platelet plug, and finally, the blood clot. Blood coagulation includes 13 clotting factors. If you need to remember the name, here is a very good monomic provided by medocrine.com. It indicates foolish people try climbing long slopes after Christmas. Some people have fallen, where F stands for fibrinogen, factor 1, factor 2, P, prothrombin, factor 3, T, thromboplastin, factor 4, calcium, factor 5, labile factor, 6 is no longer used, 7, stable factor, 8, antihemophilic factor A, 9, Christmas factor, 10, Stewart power factor, 11, plasma thromboplastin antecedent factor, 12, Hageman factor, 13, fibrin stabilizing factor. Overall, the clotting process or coagulation process is an enzymatic reaction process which consists of different steps, including three prominent stages, intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, thrombin formation and fibrin formation. Depending on the site of injury, whether external or internal trauma, this intrinsic and extrinsic pathway, it works. We will see this coagulation pathway from a video obtained from science art, which de defines the blood coagulation pathway in a very uh, symptomatic mechanism of blood uh, clotting at the site of injury. The blood clotting process takes place if there is any sort of injury. Whenever an injury takes place and if the artery is broken or there is a injury in the blood vessels at that time there is a traffic of blood cells which includes red blood cells platelets which are obtained in the blood vessel and the clotting factors too they help the blood to clot when a blood vessels is damaged there is platelet who start to form a plug so that the blood should not ooze out of the blood vessels the exposed collagen fibers initiate the process of blood clotting. Platelets adhere at the site of injury and these platelets release chemicals so that more and more platelets get attracted and form a platelet plug. The clotting factor activity increases at this time and it causes the fibrin formation. And this fibrin formation forms a clot which binds the clot uh, as a platelet plug and all the fibrin material in the injury and in several days this clot gets dissolved. So this is the normal phenomena of blood clot formation which includes the clotting factor, the platelets and the fibrin. So here we can see that at the site of injury how the platelet has been used for forming a plug so that along with the fibrin it can turn it into a blood clot and he causes healing of wound at the site of injury. It includes activated platelet and fibrin to form a clot along with several other factors, which we can see ahead. We'll move ahead so that we can understand what is the mechanism behind this clot formation. If any time a wound takes place at this position, the resting platelet is converted to activated. Prothrombin gets converted to thrombin and fibrinogen gets converted to fibrin clot. This fibrin clot causes the wound healing. Also, the platelets which are coming along from the blood flow, they form a platelet plug in the presence of ADP and thromboxin. This one should be remembered that these two materials are required to form a platelet plug. But at the same time, whenever there will be no injury at that time in a healthy blood vessel, this prostacyclin causes inhibition of platelet aggregation. There is a cascade of different factors which get activated step by step to form a blood clot. It includes both extrinsic and intrinsic pathway. This whole mechanism which includes different factors are separated as with the intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathway. We will see in detail how this injury can be treated, uh, how this injury 
can be uh, treated by a clot and this injury forms or follows a casket mechanism. This casket coagulation has been provided by thrombosis advisor so that we can understand it very well. In casket coagulation or coagulation casket as such, there is a triggering of site of injury. At the site of injury, first of all, platelets will form their aggregation, aggregation. Platelet plug will start forming. But as we have said in the previous video clip also, that it initiates the clotting factors to get activated. At this time, when the clotting factors are activated in the extrinsic pathway, when external injury takes place, the clotting factor is activated by tissue factors. The tissue factors activate factor 7 to form factor 7A. And this complex of tissue factor and factor 7A will cause the factor 10 to get activated. This activated factor 10 is a common molecule which is coming from both the intrinsic as well as extrinsic pathway. The intrinsic pathway consists of different steps. 12 gets activated by 12A, then 11A and 9A. This 9A, that is 9 activated, forms a complex with 8A and it forms a complex with factor 10. So the factor 10 gets activated. In short, we get a very crucial moiety from both the pathways, that is 10A. Further, this activated factor 10 forms a complex with factor 5 and activates the prothrombin and convert it into thrombin. It always, uh, in the complex form, it converts the prothrombin to thrombin and it should be noted that factor 10A produces thousands of thrombin material from this site. This thrombin material is now getting released at the site of platelet plug formation and causes more and more platelet to get attracted. Also, this thrombin forms a conversion of uh, fibrinogen to fibrin. When this fibrinogen are converted into fibrin form, it forms a plug like material where it causes a tightening of all the platelet plugs and the RBCs which are flowing over there for thus forming a venous plug. This can be concluded that this 10A is a very crucial factor if it is controlled at this time of coagulation it may lead to stoppage of blood coagulation if there is excess of clot formation or if it is working insufficiently then there will be lack of coagulation which is again a uh, disease condition for many uh, condi for many uh, patients. So all these conditions has to be studied appropriately according to the, the situation that whether we need to have a coagulation or anticoagulation. And so we will proceed with the coagulations. So classification of coagulants it includes the first class that is agents acting locally. Example thrombin. Then transfusional agents, which includes human fibrinogen, anti-hemophilic globulin, plasma or blood. The non-transfusional agents like vitamin K, epsilon aminocaparic acid, that is EACA, tranexamic acid, ethamsalate, aproteinin and desmopressin. We will see individually one by one the classes. The agents acting locally, first including thrombin, it is obtained from human or bovine plasma. It is uh, used to restrict by local application the oozing of blood. Then similarly is the thromboplastin. It is prepared from the acetone extracts of brain or lung tissue of killed rabbits. They determine the prothrombin. They are used to determine prothrombin time in pathology and as a local hemostatic in surgery. Next example of this class is fibrin obtained from human plasma used in dehydrated form as a sheet to cover bleeding surface and in combination with thrombin to hold it over bleeding area. Next example is gel foam. It is a porous pressed form of gelatin sponge used with thrombin to control oozing of blood. Available is in cones, packs, sponges and powders forms. Next is oxidized cellulose. It is a surgical gauze treated with nitrogen dioxide. It promotes clotting by reaction between hemoglobin and cellulosic acid. It becomes sticky when mixed with tissue juice and exert its hemostatic action. Next is microfibrillar collagen. It is prepared from bovine collagen. It is applied to bleeding surface, attracts platelets to form plug followed by natural clot used in capillary bleeding. It is a non-allergic but can promote local infection. It is inactivated by autoclaving and hence should not be sterilized. Another category of our concern is transfusional agents. These agents include human fibrinogen, anti-hemophilic globulin and plasma or blood. 
beginning with human fibrinogen the source is again plasma human plasma it is used for restoring normal fibrinogen levels in hemorrhagic complications fibrinogen and thrombin may be employed together for local hemostasis anti hemophilic globulin hemophilia a and b the christmas disease are two commonest hereditary hemorrhage states due to deficiency of specific clotting factor 8 and 9 respectively we have seen how factor 8 and 9 are responsible for activation of 10a in intrinsic pathway so it is now prepared by dna recombinant te technique uh, for like in these days future uh, future is so much secured by this dna recombinant technology which is providing us many useful disease treating medicines desmopressin which we are going to uh, study shortly it increases the anti hemophilic globulin blood level by increasing its release and uh, it is very expensive may be associated with greater risk of inducing immunoglobulin g antibodies to factor 8 so it has to be used under the medical supervision by the physicians ministry uh, uh, guidance and the christmas disease in this it can be used as fresh or stored plasma infusion to replenish the factor 9 which is stable on storage plasma or blood the fresh frozen plasma is used in coagulation disorders it can be concentrated of factor 8 or preparation containing factors 2 7 9 and 10 with specific deficiency so there will be no need of transfusion of whole blood cells as it may cause risk of transfusion reaction then the last class non transfusional agents it includes vitamin k epsilon amino caproic acid tranexamic acid ethyl salate a protein in and desmopressin we'll start with the vitamin k first vitamin k is in the three forms distinct forms is used the fat soluble naphthoquinone compounds which includes vitamin k1 which are found from dietary source it is fat soluble phytoanadone and pholoquinone vitamin k2 which is produced from the git in the git from the intestine this uh, vitamin k2 is isolated or obtained or synthesized we can say then vitamin k3 which is a synthetic compound it is a fat soluble uh, fat soluble minadion which is uh, yeah, helpful over here this minadion and acetaminophen are fat soluble and at the same time the Uh, water soluble minadion sodium bisulfate minadion sodium diphosphate these are responsible uh, as a uh, vitamin k3 uh, section then pharmacological actions it includes uh, the it participates in the carboxylation of glutamic acid this carboxylation is important for conversion of inactivated factors into fa activated one it activates or carboxylate the factor 7 9 and 10 in the final stage of synthesis also it is involved in electron transport and oxidative phosphorylation so one should remember that vitamin k has a very crucial role of carboxylation which is activation of the uh, uh, clotting factors in clotting mechanism then the absorption it is uh, produced by the flora of human intestine fat soluble vitamin k1 and k2 are absorbed in presence of bile salts while water soluble k3 is absorbed even in their absence adverse reactions are rare but after oral administration serious anaphylactic reactions after iv use are seen larger doses of synthetic minadion produces hemolytic anemia hyperbilirubinemia and kernicterus in newborn as this competes with bile salts it causes accumulation of bile salts in blood results into jaundice then the next therapeutic uses of vitamin k the minadion is used in uh, adult vitamin k deficiency produced by malabsorption obstructive jaundice and prolonged malnutrition during acute diarrhea vitamin k deficiency in infants has been noticed then neonatal vitamin k deficiency and bleeding state during oral anticoagulant therapy vitamin k has been used this is very essential to be remembered over here because if a, a person or a patient is on oral anticoagulant therapy at that time the clotting mechanism is very much slowed down when there is very much disturbance or blockage of this coagulant anti uh, coagulation pathway and if any injury takes place at that time it becomes very difficult to clot the blood so vitamin k is essential when there will be a treatment or a long um, bleeding state during the oral anticoagulant therapy epsilon amino caproic acid it is a water soluble analog of lysine 
one should remember this it this can come uh, as a objective or for our uh, different purposes that water soluble analog of lysine is eaca uh, which it is the point to be remembered the mechanism of action is it inhibits plasminogen activation this is very much important step when uh, there will be formation of blood clot what happens the uh, there is uh, plasminogen is an agent which is along with the uh, fibrin it gets uh, comes uh, closer to the blood clot or the blood platelet plugs at the site of clot formation and when the clot formation is over and the injury is getting healed up this plasminogen later gets activated and gets converted into plasmin and this plasmin helps in breakdown of fibrin this fibrin breakdown causes fibrin degradation products and the clot which is formed gets dissolved in the blood so that thrombus or emboli should not be formed this is the normal mechanism of this but the um, epsilon amino capric acid it inhibits plasminogen activation that means it will block the plasminogen to get activated and further it will block the breakdown of fibrin it is reversibly occupying the lysine binding site on plasminogen activates the plasminogen uh, to plasmin getting inhibited over here and result in inhibition of fibrin binding to plasminogen hence it inhibits fibrinolysis and stabilize the clot it forms a stable clot which is not it forms a stable clot which is not inhibited by the uh, which which is not uh, dissolved by the process of fibrinolysis this is to be noted in case of epsilon amino capric acid adverse effects adverse effect is given by amenomic hands which includes hypotension abdominal discomfort nasal stiffness dyspepsia and skin rashes hands these are the five major adverse reactions of epsilon amino capric acid therapeutic uses includes uh, the disease or condition of bleeding time due to damage of tissues rich in plasminogen activator for example primary menorrhagia during prostatic surgery upper gi bleeding bleeding after dental extraction and bleeding associated with thrombocytopenia postpartum hemorrhage next drug of this category is desmopressin it is a analog of arginine vasopressin this is to be remembered analog of argin, uh, arginine vasopressin it increases for short time plasma concentration of factor 8 in hemophiliacs and von willebrand factor required in von willebrand disease this is very much important to remember this von willebrand factor we will see in detail in antiplatelet uh, antiplatelet pharmacology also this is a factor which is associated in uh, platelet aggregation when there will be platelet aggregation the collagen fibers they release first the von willebrand factor this von willebrand factor is further useful in uh, attraction of platelet and for causes platelet adhesion at the site of injury so this uh, desmopressin it is given uh, which increases the short term plasma concentration of factor 8 and von willebrand factor in when von willebrand disease therapeutic uses it shortens or normalizes bleeding time in patients with congenital defects of platelets acquired bleeding time during uremia or use of aspirin acute variceal bleeding conjugated estrogen this is a newer form it improves platelet functions shorten the prolonged bleeding time as compared to desmopressin has a delayed onset but much longer duration of action it can be combined with desmopressin for synergistic effect then vitamin c which can be occasionally given specifically for controlling bleeding during the uh, condition of scurvy then snake venom of copper head and russell viper can be used which enhances coagulation by stimulating thrombokinase now we'll begin with anticoagulants as we have seen that how the coagulants are working they are promoting the coagulation pathway here we will see what are anticoagulants doing anticoagulants will work against the coagulation factors and they will block the activity of clotting the classification includes first the drugs used in vivo which includes the parenteral anticoagulants which are fast acting as the name indicates these are injectable so it will be fast acting examples heparin pivalirudin dabigatran heparinoids and oral anticoagulants oral these are as oral they will be slower acting the examples are coumarin derivatives bis-hydroxycoumarin indandione derivative example is fenindione so with these are the in vivo anticoagulants the next category is those who are used in vitro 
that is specifically for blood test in pathology labs example are heparin calcium complexing agents example sodium citrate we'll begin with the parenteral anticoagulants the fast acting one the major and the most popular one of this category is heparin heparin is used as a naturally occurring anticoagulant it is found in granules of mast cells abundant in liver and in lungs commercially heparin is obtained from lungs and intestinal mucosa of pigs and cattle but nowadays it can be also synthesized by uh recombinant dna technology many studies are going on it but commercially it is obtained from lungs and intestinal mucosa of pigs and cattle the anticoagulant uh, property of heparin is very high pharmacological action of heparin includes blood coagulation it prevents clotting of blood in vitro as well as in vivo as we have already written in the classification in both the categories the heparin is used then it act on all the three stages of coagulation that is intrinsic and extrinsic pathway then uh, thrombin formation as well as in fibrin uh, formation it activates anti thrombin 3 see anti thrombin 3 is though that factor which again works against thrombin so it will activate that and inactivates 9a and 10a and thrombin the anti thrombin and heparin complex is a thousand times active inhibitor than at alone the binding of heparin with antithrombin changes the conformation of antithrombin thus antithrombin heparin complex easily binds to serine protease of activated 10 factor with this mechanism it actually uh, determine the activity and uh, block the activity or inactivates the activity of thrombin factor 9 and factor 10 heparin it works against the 10a factor which is very much peculiar as we have seen the uh, 10a activity because it is obtained from both intrinsic as well as extrinsic uh, pathway extrinsic uh, pathway uh, and this by converting or by controlling the uh, drugs by co controlling the drugs uh, by controlling the action of factor 10a here the drug heparin is helping to block the coagulation pathway by blocking the thrombin and thus thrombin and clot formation it is uh, used uh, it is actually preventing the formation of fibrin indirectly and small doses of heparin have much less antithrombin activity but inhibits factor 10 so it can be given prophylactically also effect of lipoprotein lipase one effect is against the blood coagulation and the next effect is in a lipoprotein uh, lipase by this it abolishes the cloudiness of hyperlipemic plasma giving by tindal effect then it is also having antiplatelet activity antiplatelet activity is uh, in uh, antiplatelet activity is shown by heparin and it prolongs the bleeding time the miscellaneous actions includes inhibits aldosterone secretion causes hyperkalemia and have some anti inflammatory action adverse reactions are rbt that is rare anaphylactic reactions bleeding to avoid bleed uh, bleeding therefore as bleeding can occur due to heparin it, aspirin has to be aspirin has to be avoided during heparin therapy this is very much important point over here because aspirin itself is having a blood thinning property it is used as a antiplatelet drug so if aspirin will be given excessive bleeding will takes place that's why aspirin has to be avoided when your uh, patient is on heparin therapy then thrombocytopenia is one more adverse reaction which is due to platelet aggregation and formation of heparin dependent antiplatelet antibodies and this can be improvised by discontinuation of the therapy so this is the adverse drug reactions of heparin following the heparin is a low molecular weight heparin these are commercialized uh, one met, uh, form of heparin having lower molecular weight but these are uh, having many advantages over uh, uh, the native heparin they have many advantages they have longer uh, duration of action they selectively inactivate factor 10 their activity is selective for factor 10 and their activity on thrombin is minimal this shows that they have a predictable anticoagulant activity we have a target specification in low molecular weight and they interact relatively less with platelets fewer bleeding episodes takes place 
with a lower molecular weight heparin but the disadvantages over here are they are expensive and they have variable pharmacokinetic properties due to this variation it is not a drug of choice in uh, emergency conditions like in icu or in operation theater still the native heparin remains the choice of drug and uh, examples are enoxaparin deltaparin tinzaparin pamaparin and reviparin fondaparinux is a synthetic polysaccharide which binds to antithrombin it also in uh, it also uh, inactivation of it also causes inactivation of factor 10 to form uh, and thus leads to anticoagulation effect this low molecular weight heparin is not requiring blood sample monitoring as it does not interfere with uh, excessive bleeding but when the person is on heparin therapy the monitoring has to be taken place and blood clotting time and aptt test that is activated partial prothromboplastin uh, prothromboplast time has to be monitored heparin antagonist in case of emergency and in uh, and in types of uh, damages taking place if any uh, emergency takes place the heparin antagonist can prove to be a, a help these are strongly basic compounds they abolish the anticoagulant activity the example of this category is protamine sulfate it is a mixture of simple low molecular weight polypeptide it is found in fish sperm the origin of heparin antagonist protamine sulfate is from fish sperm it binds firmly to heparin and inactivate it 1 mg of protamine neutralizes 100 units of heparin uh, activity it is so powerful in its action after protamine injection patient should be observed for recurrence of bleeding as protamine sulfate is also a anticoagulant so it is uh, partially it is it can be partially neutralized by low molecular weight also and it causes fall in bp bradycardia and dyspnea other factor 10a inhibitor other factor 10a inhibitors include rivaroxaban it is orally active these are direct selective factor 10a inhibitor these are used for prevention and treatment of arterial and venous thromboembolism it does not require monitoring then danaparoid it is obtained from porcine intestinal mucosa does not cause thrombocytopenia and do not have any antidote used as heparin substitute to prevent post operative dvt then hirudin hirudin is a direct acting thrombin inhibitor this is obtained from a natural source that is the leech commonly known as leech hirudo medicinalis this is isolated from uh, the body of your leech now it has been synthesized by recombinant dna technique then uh, it binds reversibly uh, to thrombin in it and it inactivates free as well as fibrin bond thrombin it does not require antithrombin or other cofactor its activity is monitored by same test as that of heparin bevaliridin it is the analog of hirudin with rapid onset and offset due to reversible action they are safer than the later drug that is ergotroban it is reversible direct thrombin inhibitor alternative to hirudin then dabigatrin it is a pro drug which is orally active direct inhibitor and it is as effective as enoxaparin and having the similar adverse drug reaction the major advantage is orally active without the need of coagulation monitoring so these are all direct thrombin inhibitors which are used in patients who are at risk of developing heparin induced thrombocytopenia whenever there will be a risk in use of heparin this direct thrombin inhibitors or direct tna inhibitors will be preferred over then human antithrombin concentrate this is prepared from human plasma used alone or in combination with heparin this is used as uh, to treat the hereditary disorder antithrombin 3 deficiency because antithrombin 3 is important to block the coagulation pathway this antithrombin will inhibit the thrombin activity and when there will be deficiency of this factor we need to prescribe human uh, human antithrombin concentrate then oral anticoagulants as the name suggests it is orally given it is slower in action as that of the parenteral the very much first class of this drug is coumarin derivatives which have the lead molecule that is warfarin sodium warfarin is a anticoagulant which causes the blockage of vitamin k epoxide reductase now we will see what is the importance of vitamin k epoxide vitamin k epoxide reductase it converts vitamin k epoxide into vitamin k that means it activates the vitamin k and in turn this vitamin k 
causes activation of the clotting factors 2 7 9 and 10 by the reaction of carboxylation but when warfarin is given this whole mechanism is blocked and thus coagulation will not take place so it is a slow acting because of long half life of clotting factors and it increases plasma antithrombin 3 also it have adverse effects like that is fcb fetal toxicity, bleeding, and cutaneous gangrene. Warfarin sodium is employed as a rat poison very much commonly. It is a racemic mixture. Then it has advantages over Comarin. It is almost 99% orally absorbed, rapid onset of action, and adverse effects are few. May include alopecia, urticaria, and dermatitis, but it can cross placenta. That's why it is avoided in pregnancy. The major drawback of warfarin is having it is very much vulnerable to uh, drug interaction with various drugs. Mechanism of action of warfarin can be understood by this diagrammatic representation in which it is clearly indicated that the oxidized form of vitamin K that is the vitamin K epoxide gets reduced by epoxide reductase enzyme to form reduced form of vitamin K. This vitamin K, the reduced form causes uh, the inactive clotting for factors, factor 2, factor 7, 9 and 10 to get converted into activated one by the reaction of carboxylation. After carboxylation, this factor 2, factor 7, factor 9 and factor 10, they get activated and serially they form uh, activation in the cascade and turn into clotting mechanism. When warfarin is administered at that time when it shows its action, it blocks the epoxide reductase. It is going to block the epoxide reductase activity which will cause the conversion of epoxide form to reduced form to get blocked. When the vitamin K will not be getting uh, activated, automatically the further activation of different factors of clotting mechanism will not take place and automatically clotting mechanism will get blocked. So subsequently warfarin causes in a, uh, inactivated form of clotting factors to remain in the same form and, pro uh, and prevents the blood clot to form. In then dion derivatives, examples are phenendion, anisinodion, and anticoagulant activity is similar to coumarin compounds, but they are now obsolete because of their toxicity. Then in vitro anticoagulants, the physical methods with, by which we can cause the anticoagulation is by cooling the blood use of paraffin, collodion, or silicone coated pan for collection. Then calcium complexing agents can be used like oxalates and citrates, potassium oxalate precipitate, serum calcium as calcium oxalate and form calcium sodium citrate. The anticoagulant solution contains 2.5% of sodium citrate. Potassium oxalate produces convulsions and it is not used in vivo. This is important point. Then EDTA, which is very common, ethylene diamine tetraacetic acid EDTA, to be used as in vitro. It is a chelating agent and uh, its sodium salt is used. This ADTA, uh, sodium editate is also, which is called, is used as a coating material in append of tubes so that when blood is collected for a pathological test, there will be a coating already which will allow the blood should not, to do not form a clot. And in unclot form, the blood can be used for different um, types of testing. This uh, append of tubes are coated with a lining of lavender color, which indicates the presence of EDTA coating. Then at the same time, heparin can also be used. All the mechanism of heparin section is similar to what we have seen previously. But this heparin is, can also be used in the form EDTA is used in vitro. The coating can be done to the uh, blood collecting tubes by heparin also. And these tubes are indicated by a lining of green color. So with this, we end up with the anticoagulants. So in this video lecture, we have studied uh, briefly about the coagulants as well as coagulants, as well as anticoagulants. We are looking forward in our coming future lectures regarding fibrinolytics, antiplatelet drugs, and many more to come. So say, stay tuned. And this, uh, pro, this PowerPoint presentation has been powered by poweredtemplate.com, which is used as a designing of the background. Also, we need an attribution to medocrine.com for the monomic of um, clotting factors as well as the science art which have explained us the, so beautifully the blood clotting mechanism and uh, nevertheless thrombosis advisor we have explained the cascade of coagulation so beautifully so wait for the coming lectures in which we will study in the future stay tuned goodbye